Uh, let's give it a go. I think we'll see how this goes. And my favourite back culture talks, you know, the ones we've seen tonight, some really brilliant ones, I'm standing on the creepy bit, uh, are about the bins where I learn stuff. Uh, I learned how to bake a cake, uh, I've had mind blowing talks, I have to talk about, she's absolutely amazing. Uh, and Helen's talk on suicide, if you can find it on the internet, uh, helped me to talk honestly about taking my own life. Um, which has been uh, incredible, but I wondered what I could teach you guys. Uh, it would be folly to try and guess what everybody in here uh, wanted to know. So what I thought I would do was just think about the stuff that I knew and share that and hope that it resonates with somebody. Uh, and, the, uh, and the idea of helping you guys and trying to think about the things that where I need help most uh, is about mindfulness. It's about trying to uh, remain focused, trying to pay attention. You know, I imagine everybody in here has forgotten something uh, and, uh, and, you know, probably uh, made a mistake, left something behind. Uh, here's a lovely Emily Dickinson quote, which I felt like I could shoot one into like because I was really liking it, and now it feels like it's totally inappropriate. But just Google Emily Dickinson after this, it's amazing. Uh, what I'm really talking about here is uh, ADD. So uh, I score 140 out of 150 on an ADD register, which basically means that uh, I can pay attention for about 15 seconds without thinking about something else. Uh, if I'm talking to you, I'm definitely thinking about something else. If I've talked to you for 30 seconds, I'm definitely thinking about something else. Uh, I find it really hard to read a paragraph, but it makes me quite good at my job, which is coming up with new ideas and expanding stuff. Uh, but what I'm going to try and do is give you some of the tips that I do as a complete mental head uh, to solve this problem, which hopefully for a group of normal people might be useful. Uh, mornings, for somebody whose brain is like a radio station, uh, or radio playing 200 stations at once, are particularly difficult. I'm fuzzy, I'm incredibly cranky. Uh, so the way I get over this is to do all of my thinking the night before when I don't have to do my thinking. And that's quite extreme. I lay out all of my clothes, I pack my bag, I have been known to make a cup of coffee and put it in the fridge. Uh, so that basically I get out and put it in the microwave, everything's done. I've got a three-year-old daughter who I also have to get ready. Her clothes are equally laid out, her bag is equally packed. But it does mean I have a lot of time in the morning now. Uh, the other day I found myself with an hour to uh, just chill out, relax, uh, and play with my daughter, which I utterly confused with the amount of time that I had. But it was pretty fantastic. Um, one of the other tips I've got is that uh, I don't argue with people that agree with me. And that seems kind of obvious, but you, this, the conversations that we have are, do you want to watch this movie? Uh, yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Are you really sure? Yeah. Do you want to go to this restaurant? You don't have to if you don't want to. Well, no, I said that you want to, but you don't have to. Uh, the big one that I see is when you pay for stuff, and people say, I pay, and you go, no, no, I will pay. This one's a really quick one, but very simple. If you want to remember a time, you want to wake up at a certain time, or remember a certain thing, jump up and down at that number of times. Uh, my grandma taught me that. Uh, it seems absolutely <laughs> mental, but I've been doing it since I was 12 and it has never failed before doing 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, one of the other tips is better culture, it's absolutely fantastic for my crazy brain. Uh, we talk about a huge amount of big swirling thoughts, lots of, lots of those things. What better culture does is teach me to trim all of those things down and turn them into little five minute parcels. Once I've turned it into this five minute parcel, it sits <coughs> stacked nice and easily in my head. Uh, and I'm going to do a quick experiment. If anybody uh, has got a drink in their hand, put it down. Uh, if you haven't, don't worry about it. I'd like you to close your eyes and imagine a glass in front of you. And when you're imagining that glass in front of you, uh, imagine lifting it up to your mouth, pouring exactly the right amount of liquid in. And once you've done that, stop. Imagine it coming down and it floating about in front of you. Now, as you see, that was probably quite difficult. Much harder than it was when you previously took drinks easy earlier this evening. And that's because imaginative things take up a huge amount of space in your brain, and they certainly do for me. Uh, I've got a huge amount of stuff that's never going to happen. Uh, and what ifs are uh, unicorns, they're things that don't exist. And all of these things, uh, all of the stuff I've talked about for all my preparations are about uh, imaginative things, <coughs> things that could happen or might happen, you haven't done yet, you need to do, are all pretend things, and pretend things make up a huge space in your brain. So, very quickly what I'm going to say is make it real, write it down, if it's not real, if it's not going to happen, it hasn't happened yet, and you ha can't make it real by writing it down or actually doing it, let it go, and you will end up with a huge amount of space in your brain. <laughs>